Okay, so in this problem, we're told in this figure, the coefficient of static friction between MA in the table is 0.4, whereas the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.3. A, what minimum value of MA will keep the system from starting to move? B, what value of MA will keep the system moving at a constant speed? So what we have here is we have these two blocks, MA and MB, and so we know they're connected by a pulley, right? So MB is here. Uh, we're also given the mass of MB, uh, we're given the coefficient of kinetic friction, and we also have the coefficient of static friction. So let me write that in. That is 0 0.40. And so we're going to be solving for a bunch of things. So first, let's just start with A. So A is asking us to find the minimum value of MA. So we're going to be finding a mass. So MA equals question mark. And so keep in mind, we're finding a mass that will keep the system from starting to move. So when they say keep it from starting to move, I know we're not going to be moving. So that, uh, that tells me we're going to be using the coefficient of static friction somehow. And so before we get started with that uh, and trying to understand, I think we should draw the free body diagram first. So let's go ahead and do that. So what forces are acting on each of the blocks? So when you draw it, you want to draw it for each, bro uh, each block separately. So we're going to start with the block B. So we know we have... The force due to gravity acting straight down on this block it's going to be pulling it down which is mg and then counteracting that we have the force due to tension and so we can call that f of t and so that's going to be the free body, free body diagram for this block so mg and f of t are going to be for this one and then what do we have for this one so we obviously know we have the force of tension going to be pulling it this way right because this thing is going to be going down and then what other forces do we have? So we have the normal force acting on this block because anything touching is something is going to have a normal force repelling against it. And then we also have the force due to gravity. We'll call that MAG. I should have wrote MBG here. So let me write that MBG. And then we also have, if this is moving, we have the force of friction here. Right, so these are going to be the different forces acting on this block. So the force of tension, gravity, the force of friction, and the normal force, right? Because the force of friction always acts opposite to the way it moves, which is why I labeled it this way. Gravity just points down. Uh, normal force is perpendicular to the surface. And then the force of tension is just the pulley here. Okay, cool. So now that we know that, we're going to be solving for MA here, assuming, right, we're going to find the minimum value of MA to keep it from starting to move. So the way I think about this is I know this block right here is going to be pulling down on this. And if we want it not to move, the force of tension here has to be equal to mbg. And the way we can show that is if we take the sum of the forces, and that's how you solve these problems, is you take the sum of the forces in a direction, in this case, the y. So the reason I'm saying y is because if you think of it like a graph, you have the x direction and the y direction. So I'm saying sum of the forces in the y. And so we want them to equal 0 because we don't want this to move. So 0 equals, and then you just add up the forces, so F of T and MBG. And so if it goes upwards, you keep it positive. If it goes downwards, it's negative. And so you'll see, so we add F of T and then minus MBG because it's down. This tells us F of T equals MBG. And that's what we want because we want this block to be frozen. That's why we set this as 0. Cool. So we can find the tension force that ne that's needed in order for this thing not to move. So F of T is going to be equal to MBG, which is uh, MB is 2 times G, which is 9.8. So 2 times 9.8. So it's going to be 19.6. So 19.6. And then Newtons is the unit for force. So we know this is going to be 19.6 Newtons in order for this not to move. So this tension force right here is also 19.6. And so if we want this not to move, F of T here has to be equal to the force of friction. Because if it's not, then it would move, obviously. So we know F of T is equal to the force of friction. Because these are the only forces in the X, if F of T was greater than that, it would move. So we need these to, these, uh, both of these to be equal. And so the way you show that is, since we did the sum of the forces in the Y here, we would do the sum of the forces in X. I'm just showing you kind of the conceptual way to think about it and then showing it. But we want it to be zero so it doesn't move, right? Because we don't want it to move. And then zero equals F of T. So to the right, we'll say it's positive. To the left is negative. 
so f of t and then minus f sub f because it's uh, to the left. And this tells us f of t has to equal f of s or f of f for it not to move. Well, we know what f of t is. So we know 19.6 equals the force of friction. Okay. Now the force of friction, you need to know the formula for it. You should know it by now. But force of friction is equal to uh, the coefficient of kinetic or static friction. In this case, we're working with it not moving. So you want to use static. So anything not moving, you use static. So mu sub s times the normal force. So we know 19.6 has to be equal to mu sub s times f sub n. Cool. We know mu sub s equals uh, 0.4. So we know our normal force now. So let me zoom out a bit. So 19.6 divided by 0.4, you're gonna get 49. And so this is Newton since we're dealing with force. And this is where the cool part comes in. So now that we have the normal force, we know this block, uh, so if we sum the forces along y here, you know you'll find that, I'll show you this way first. So some of the forces, since it's not moving, it's zero. So some of the forces in the y, let me move over a bit, are gonna be equal to zero here. So zero equals, and then add these forces up, up is positive, so Fn, and then minus Mag. This tells us our normal force is going to have to be equal to the mass of the block times gravity. So we can solve for Ma, right? Because we know the normal force now. So 49 equals Ma times G, which is 9.8. So dividing both sides, 49 divided by 9.8, you'll get 5. So you're going to get that it equals 5 kilograms. So this is going to be the required mass in order for it not to move, right? And that's exactly what they wanted us to find. So kind of explain how we did this. So I knew that we were going to be solving for MA, right? We need to find MA. And so I know MA and FN are equal to each other. And because of these only two forces acting in these directions, right, for this block at least, and since the only force acting in that direction, they have to equal zero for it not to move. So I know they're equal. So I know if I can find the normal force, I can solve for MA. So how do I find the normal force? So we got the normal force from this one because I knew the force of friction has to be equal to the tension for it not to move. So if I can solve for the tension, then I can solve for uh, the force of friction. Now we got tension from this one because we knew tension, if it equals MBG, it doesn't move. So then I have tension and then I just plug it in and I was able to solve through. So that's kind of the path we took to solve it. So those are just things you're going to have to learn and recognize. So notice if you're solving for MA, you're probably going to be using normal force and stuff like that. So yeah, that's just how you connect those. And then next, what we're going to do is part B. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so now in order to solve for part B, what we're looking for is uh, the values of MA that keep it moving at a constant speed. So this part's actually going to be really easy since we did the first part. The only thing that's going to change about this is the coefficient of uh, friction that we use. So keep in mind, we use static the first time. That's what you use when it's uh, stationary. But in this case, we're trying to find at a constant speed. So we still do set everything to zero like this. But the only thing that changes is the force of friction isn't equal to mu sub s times f sub n. It's equal to mu sub k times f sub n. So that's where the change comes in. So once again, it's 19.6 because we want to keep it moving constant. And what does constant mean? Constant means A is zero. So you're moving at a constant velocity when your acceleration is zero. And so if acceleration is zero, for all of these F summing the forces, F equals MA, but A is zero. So if it's not moving and it's not accelerating, they're both zero. The only thing that changes is this coefficient of friction. So hopefully that makes sense. But when we solve it, we just use mu sub k times f sub n now. So the force of friction we, is still 19.6, right? Because we don't use it before that. So it still is 19.6 equals 0.3 now, because that's the coefficient of kinetic times the normal, or f sub n. So f sub n in this case is going to be equal to 65.33 newtons. And so once again, we just do this here. So F sub n equals MA. Sorry about that. FN. Yeah. So 65.33. We have F sub n equals MA times G. So dividing by G, which is 9.8. You should know that. 
So 65.33 divided by 9.8 is 6.666 and so on. So 6.67, we'll say, let me rewrite it, 6.67 kilograms. So if we want to find the mass of it not to move, right, to stop it from moving, uh, we know it's got to be 5 kg and then to keep it moving at a constant speed, MA has to be equal to 6.67 kg. So the only thing that changes was the coefficient of friction we used. But uh, yeah, so these are going to be your answers for this problem. And hopefully you found it useful.